Danielle Kelly up against Ayaka Miura at one fight night seven. Danielle, great to see you. Your record against MMA fighters is pretty solid. How confident are you uh, in getting another finish here following on from a beautiful finish in your last match? I'm pretty confident. I'm looking forward to putting on a really fun show or a quick show, depending how I feel. Do you feel flattered that some fans are calling you the face of women's submission grappling in one after two really strong performances inside the circle? Uh, flattered, maybe, but I feel like, you know, like I'm pretty small, so I like to think I'm the face of like the smaller women's jiu-jitsu. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I think I think I'm heading that way, but I just got to kind of keep my feet in the ring more. So, uh, you know, just get more experience and go against a lot of girls. But yeah, it's a pretty good feeling. Your debut was a draw against Mei Yamaguchi. Do you think that Ayaka presents a similar skill set to her? And how do you feel about her as a challenge for you? I think she may be more uh, technical and more engaging than May. Uh, May was really good at her defense and she's really strong and I think my opponent's going to be either just as strong or stronger because I'm kind of uh, I'm going to be like way lighter than her um, my opponent Ayaka I'm sorry if I mispronounced her name um, but yeah I think my technique will just be a little better I just have to make sure I get her moving so because um, she's really good at MMA and she's really she has a really good base and her specialty she's really good at are you relishing this extra challenge at fighting at the catch weight? Do you think you're going to have added strength, maybe? Um, I get to eat whatever I want, and I don't really have to, like, you know, kind of be on a strict diet as I'm flying 20 hours. Um, but no, I think I feel just as fine. Like, I walk around with 15, usually lighter sometimes. But I think, I think if I just use my technique right, I think her size won't matter. So the second MMA fighter that you're uh, taking on inside one, if you get a decent win here, will you consider making a jump to MMA in the future? Um, Yeah, I get that question a lot. I'm focusing on jiu-jitsu right now. And if MMA ever comes to mind or it brings my attention, I will have to like talk or think about certain things. But for now, it's just jiu-jitsu. How do you feel about striking? Do you enjoy it? What's your favorite striking martial art? Have you got an affinity for it? I actually enjoy Muay Thai. I was I've been training Muay Thai for like four years, even like before then, um, like when I was a pro belt. But I just never really got a fight or anything. I kind of just stuck with jujitsu. But it's pretty fun. But um, you know, jujitsu is kind of starting to like be on the map, and you know, athletes can actually make a living off it. So I've just been working on my jiu-jitsu more and hopefully get a title match. So since you've come to one, you're facing these different martial artists with different styles, whether it's from MMA, judo, grappling, how do you prepare for the intricacies of each different opponent? Uh, so I study them. I study like what they're really good at. Um, you know, just, just like if it's jiu-jitsu person, judo, MMA, I look at where they're really good at and where their weaknesses are um and i just start kind of working my game so they get to play my game have you prepared anything specific for ayaka uh yes <laughs> interesting i feel like you have a secret weapon up your sleeve for this one <laughs> kind of um i mean i'm just debating with myself if i want to like keep it a short match and just submit it right away or you know make it fun but you know I'm kind of I'm gonna be like way lighter than her so I don't know if I want to like play with her too much because you know she's really good she's strong at, at what she does um but yeah I uh I have a few tricks up my sleeve yeah what would you say is your favorite submission? I saw in an interview you talking about wanting to go for the choke, saying that maybe leg locks are a little bit overplayed right now. Uh, be interesting to hear you elaborate on that a bit. Um, honestly, I've been liking chokes. Uh, I think, I mean, they're all submissions are good. Leg locks are 
you know, anyone says leg locks are fake or not good, like they're just out of their mind. I was kind of like saying it as a lot of people are focused on, you know, doing leg locks and whatnot, and people are getting better at defending them and maintaining good position and, you know, beating the people who only have tunnel vision on leg locks. But with that being said, um, I have been working on a lot of that as well as, you know, trying to maybe take her back just like my last uh, opponent that I, when I took her back and choke her. So I think, I think rear naked chokes are still my favorite, you know, Hadjo Gracie, that's one of his favorites. So, you know, I think they're, I think there's much better than like an arm lock or a leg lock, but yeah, yeah, leg locks are still good. Do you feel like alongside the Ruotolos that you're kind of injecting new life into one championship submission grappling? Uh, we saw a submission grappling match years ago with Shinya Aoki, but this influx of incredible world-class talent is a relatively new thing. Do you relish the chance to showcase to new grappling fans what you can do and, and try to do something innovative when you're in there? Yeah, for sure. I mean, honestly, too, I feel like a lot of people have been watching the grappling, especially my matches. You know, everyone's looking forward to my match coming up with Ayaka. Um, even the last one, like a lot of people were watching that. And I've been focusing on, you know, I compete. I kind of, I even want to try, like, not have the matches go out too long, just like my main match. Um, but when I'm doing a technique, I want it to be very precise. So, you know, a lot of people, kind of like what Gordon does, like he, he presents the technique in his matches and then he talks about it or makes it instructional about it. So that's like one of my goals. So hopefully, you know, some things I've been working on, I can implement it in this match and teach it out there. How do you feel about competing inside the circle? Does it present a different dimension to you? We've seen fighters kind of running across the cage wall at times. Uh, has it added another element to you? So I believe this match is going to be in a ring. It's in Thailand. Um, I cannot pronounce the stadium's name, but it's in like a famous stadium and they only use rings. Um, I've actually never competed in a ring. So that's going to be very interesting. I think that's going to be, I think it'll be a positive on my side um, being a grappler. But with the cage, it was a little different. And I think uh, with my first match, it was actually my first match with one championship um, against May. It was on the cage and I kind of had to get used to it and it was a little different. I think she used the cage really well to prevent me from trying to get submissions and she used it for defense really well. Um, but I think like over time, you know, when you, when you train for it, it, you get a little better at it. But I think it does kind of change jujitsu a little bit. How do you enjoy the one championship rule set? I like it. You know, it makes, it makes people not stall or try to like, stay in position and then have the other person like you know they the refs will tell you to keep going if you stall you'll get a penalty card and I think that's really good for the sport because no one wants to watch boring jiu-jitsu or no one's everyone's just stalling so I like the rules because it makes you like keep going for the submission uh, Angela Lee once called you out for a submission grappling match. Well, we know it's about that you wouldn't back down from. Are you opening? Are you open to the same kind of match up against somebody like Shang Jing Nan? Shang Jing, uh, they, they fought, right? They did. Like, yeah, recently. they fought a trilogy. She's the women's strawweight champion in MMA. Okay, that's what I was thinking about. Sorry, the name, th the names throw me off. Um, I would love to go against both of them. I'd love to go against her why not sounds easy to me i think she'll be an easier matchup than angela but yeah <laughs> i wouldn't turn that down can you give us your assessment of the women's grapplers in one overall have you been impressed by the talent is there anyone that stands out to you uh to me, I would say, I mean, I like Angela's jiu-jitsu, but, you know, I really like the twister. I like, I've always liked how she did that in her matches or her fights. Um, there's another girl, Izuki, but, you know, I, I think I'm better, my jiu-jitsu and my wrestling is better than her. Um, but, you know, she's, she's also from around here. Uh, I think she's a judo girl too. But my opponent, Ayaka, she, you know, I watched her, her fights recently and she does like the same move, like, you know, I call her like a mini Ronda Rousey, 
um, I think it's pretty cool that she submits these girls with the same move and like these girls that know that it's going to happen to them and she still does it. So I find that very impressive of her. So I'd say like those three girls stand out to me. Yeah, she got uh, three Americana submissions in a row in MMA. Uh, are you on your guard about that? Is that something you're you're watching out for? Yeah, for sure. And she does like, you know, she uh, from that from that position, she kind of like goes for like a Kimura or like a arm, head and arm triangle choke. You know, she she does it pretty well. And these the other girls can't stop it. But I feel like my defense is better and I feel like I can scramble out a lot of stuff. So it'll be interesting, but I definitely don't want to be in that position to find out. We have uh, some history awaiting us in May with one championship going to Colorado, Demetrius Johnson taking on Adriano Marais in the trilogy. How significant is that for you to see one come to the USA? I think it's, it's awesome. You know, the thing is that's their, their first ever U.S. show, and they had uh, DJ fighting again for the main card, and a bunch of jiu-jitsu people. I know Mikey just got a match. Um, I think it's going to be a phenomenal card, and you know, you know, it's in May. I'm competing right now. Then this this month, I don't, I'm not really expecting to be on that card, but you know, it would definitely be, it would definitely be something that I'm looking forward to, and I think you know, a lot of fans are going to be excited for this uh, this fight, and I think. It's just, it's going to blow up. What would be your ideal matchup on a, on a USA card? Um, ideal matchup. I have mentioned before, I mentioned Angela Lee, like I think, cause we're, she's a big name as well. Um, it would bring a lot of eyes to women's jujitsu. You know, she's a known, she's a big name and in, in one championship in MMA. So I think that would be like a good matchup. Another one was Jessica Khan. I know she signed, but I don't know if I haven't seen her really compete, but that would be a good matchup. Um, I have history, so I would definitely like to get that one back. And the third one, I would say Azuki. Um, she also has a lot of attention on her, and she's from New York now. So those would be like my top three with big names. I have a, they have a lot of attention on them. Um, for you... Who is the person in this sport that you most look up to? Who's the biggest influence for you? Biggest influence. Um, I would say Ronda Rousey. Just her, just her, or uh, uh, Ronda Rousey and Gina Carano. But Ronda Rousey, like I really, I liked her mindset while she was training, getting ready for for fights. Not necessarily her attitude, but like, you know, she was she brought women's MMA to the world and to the main like mainstream um so i always looked up for her to that and one of the first people that i started watching to get into jiu-jitsu and fighting was gina carano um and i like what she's doing now like she used her fighting to do to be a movie star you know it's really cool to look up to someone like that and what she's doing something positive both of them are um i think they're they're positive role models to look to look up out there and then for guys i'd say gsp just because um he's george he's gsp so He's always a good fighter. It's a special time in history and you're a pioneer. We're seeing new world champions getting crowned. Are you sensing a one submission grappling world title in your near future, 2023 this year? Does it feel close to you? Yeah, I, th I think so. I know there hasn't been any matchups, but I would like to think I'm in line for the title. But, you know, again, I'm, I'm not really expecting anything. I'm training for whoever. I'm going to be studying people and just stay prepared. And if I get the title, you know, I'll, I'll be ready for it. Maximum respect. Always incredible to watch you compete and great to talk to you. Thanks, Danielle. Thank you so much.